speaking with you, man. But congratulations, you have teamed up with uh, Lemon Entertainment. How does it feel being part of the family? It's awesome, man. Like it's so great to be able to focus more on the art and the creating the music and stuff like that, and know that a team of pros are behind me, sort of trying to figure out all the uh, angles and coming up with opportunities. And uh, yeah, it's something I've I've been looking for for a long time, and uh, it feels really good to have found the right fit. How did this combination come together, my friend? You know what, man? It's sort of a testament to uh, to being open and trying stuff because, truthfully, uh, I had heard about the Lemon Stage and, and I saw a bunch of their posts and I love the look of their their of their socials and I like the idea of the stage that they were doing at the Elmo at the time. And uh, I looked them up and I reached out to them off their website and sent some music and heard back from, from Jessica Lemon right away and uh, that sort of it just took off from there. The music really resonated with her and I, and I got a great vibe from them. And uh, it was just one of those really sort of natural evolutions. Now with a natural evolution and being part of them, what's, what, what's the, what was the plan for you? What did they want to do with you? Because we're going to be talking about music. We're going to be talking about your career, but you give us any little hints behind the scenes and what some of the conversations were about. Well, you know, we, we met at an interesting time because I had done this record episode five and I had been releasing it, trying some, some different stuff. Um, I did a companion book, and I was just sort of releasing one single at a time. Part of that was experimentation, I mean, certainly. And then, and then a fair amount of that, too, was just the, because of the pandemic, you know, not to bring up that up because everybody's tired of talking about it. But um, it is, you know, a shared experience, that's for sure. Um, I, I really wanted to sort of um, try to sort of, as they would say, keep a few horses in the barn with this record until I could release it into a more normalized marketplace. So um, I hadn't released it all the streaming. I had just done a few singles. Like today when it came out, there's five or six songs that hasn't, haven't been heard before. So, um, you know, we talked about that and the, and the idea of sort of creating awareness and getting that out there and then sort of starting to build some more audience for me and, and newer and broader audiences looking forward towards doing a new record and new projects uh, that they would be part of from the inception where we would sort of have more resources to market them and tour them and do all that kind of stuff, you know? Amazing. Well, let's talk about your career before we get into this uh, latest album. Because I'll tell you something. We've only talked for like just a couple of minutes. Your speaking voice is absolutely different from your singing voice. Some people <laughs> sound sort of familiar with you know they sound almost the same the two voices Yours, are the same it's it's completely different you have this i don't know what it is man it's like a uh uh r&b soul folk kind of dreamy voice kind of oh, energy shit, that you. resonates in you and but when i'm reading about you they say something about like you're supposed to be a country artist and it's like, well, hold on. I'm hearing the music, and I'm not hearing the country. But then again, I mean, country music has evolved so much, especially Canadian country music has evolved so much these days. Country music, yeah. especially Canadian, they throw in reggae. They throw in so many other different things. It's even hard to even say what country music is supposed to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely, man. Well, thank you, for first of all. Uh, that's a very nice compliment. Um I guess for me, like, I don't know, man, like, I sort of feel like the, especially now with streaming and socials and the ability to connect directly with your audience, like, for me, you know, I've, my whole career wanted genre to be less of a thing, you know, uh, and, and for me, sort of genre is sort of over, like, it's just kind of, it's kind of just music, right? And so, like you say, country, I mean, I would never really call myself a country artist, that said, at all, I mean, that said, I came up around it, I mean, in a rural community, but like my, my dad and my uncle and, and family would play in country bands, do legions and, you know, like, like many uh, people in rural areas. But, but then my mom was really uh, into soul and R&B and Aretha and Ray Charles and all this. And, and, and it's so funny, though, um, there's a commonality in all that. Like, I mean, you know, the Ray Charles record, Modern Sounds of Country and Western, right? And like all the country that Ray did. And, um, and, you know, then you take someone like, like Charlie Rich and like, and, and, you know, and Conway Twitty, I mean, Conway Twitty was the rock and roll singer that switched over. I mean, if you go way back and then you come in now and you look at 
you know, Chris Stapleton and you look at Brett Eldridge and, and Thomas Rhett and all of these people. I mean, it, like, I would never say that isn't country, but it's certainly not, not pop or R and B. Right. So I, I don't know, man, I, um, uh, you know, like it used to be when I was a younger man, you know, it would bother me when people said, oh, you don't fit into this specific peg or this, this peg doesn't fit in this specific hole and you got to be in a lane. And, and I, and I won't lie, like that has presented challenges over the years, but, but to me, like, um, for someone to say that they don't really know what I am, is probably the biggest compliment they could give me because that means that I have my own thing. Right. Yes. And and that's really what we all set out to do. Right. Like, you know, same as when you do a record and people say, well, I listen to your record and there's some that are like have this sort of bumping sort of 80s, 90s R&B vibe. But then you get to the next song and it kind of has the singer songwriter roots vibe. And I'm like, yeah, that that that's like to me what a record needs to be. Right. If you look at like Court and Spark by Joni Mitchell, mm-hmm. like, um, like, holy shit, you know, pardon my language, but like that is uh, like there's rock and roll songs and then there's folk songs and then there's, you know, all of the artists I love, Ray Charles, um, all these all these artists that I love and was most influenced by um, Bill Withers, like Prince, they all have that that sort of depth to them where they can sort of they can move around and keep it interesting, you know, but there's a richness to your voice. Was that just something that was natural? Um, well, I mean, I guess so. I mean, I, I, I presume, you know, like your vocal tone has a lot to do with your physiology and, and your, what just are born with what God gives yeah. you. But, um, but certainly, I mean, like I owe a huge debt of gratitude to, especially like, you know, Ray and Bill Withers and, and, um, and then like my mom was like really into like someone like Kenny Loggins as a kid. Kenny Loggins is incredible. So, I mean, very, very much a soul singer, you know? Uh, but has folk undertones, and then you know, uh, Delbert McClinton, and 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 you know, I, I just man, I, I love all kinds of singers, but yeah, I mean, I'm deeply, I mean, and then of course, in the 90s, I got really into sort of into, into D'Angelo and then Donny Hathaway, and like that whole thing. I mean, I'm a I'm an RB freak, you know, and uh, Clar- even like Clarence Carter and then Muscle Shoals, and and all of that music is really, um, but you know, soul music is. But like you said it well, like soul music, like, I mean, like you can't get more, much more soulful than Chris Stapleton. You know what I mean? And, and he's being, he's a country artist, but I mean, is he, or is he a, a guy singing R and B with acoustic guitar on country radio? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a hard question to answer. And really who wants to answer it? He's just really great. You know? No. And you're absolutely right too on that. Um, but when it comes to telling stories lyrically, mm-hmm. what stories do you like to tell? I mean, I, I mainly write love songs. I mean, I, I think that, that is, I mean, like most people do, but uh, especially, in, you know, being an artist. Ah, 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 ah. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Oh, really? Okay. I'm going gonna, gonna to disagree with you on All that. Right. Tell I, me and why. the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm an old school guy. Yeah. And <laughs> growing up, every album, it didn't matter if it was rock or it was R&B or whatever else, they always had a ballad or two ballads. Oh, you know, yeah, when we sure. got into... When we got into the eighties, there, you know, you would have those those big especially for rock albums, they had that big ballad. Oh, the big power ballad. ballads. Yeah, the power ballad, thank you. But in today's thing, I don't hear ballads really anymore. Uh, I don't you know, hear love songs anymore where if a guy doesn't know what he wants to say to a woman he hears one of your songs and he figures it out because you've already sort of helped map it out for him. That's well, what love songs have done in the past. We Absolutely. don't get enough of those. So that's why I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have to go, wait a second. Uh-uh. Well, okay, so maybe the not. fact that yeah. you are following the fact that you're following that, I applaud you, sir. Oh, thank you. I mean, I mean, maybe maybe that is a place where where country music's influenced me a lot. There's an awful lot of love songs on country radio. You know what I mean? Um, yes. But you know, Rudy, like, like one thing that's super important to me, um, just sort of as a writer and as a performer, is 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 sort of like the sort of um, uh, the sort of the vulnerability and the honesty of love songs, like the ability to to sort of 
that, you know, well, I mean, like one of the tunes that just came up today is going through the emotions. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I sort of find sometimes that, that, that people are sort of, sort of, we can tend, and I, I do it too, to be a bit quirky or ironic or sort of, sort of not serious um, as an effect but mm -hmm. but like sometimes it's just a little bit of a like a a fearfulness of being vulnerable and being open and being like uh be, you know being really honest about how you feel um and, and and being really sort of tender and exposed is something that sometimes people cover with with shtick or irony or hipness or coolness right and and like to me and like there's nothing cooler than and honesty and sincerity and vulnerability like that's really like i mean if you look at like like to, to mention again like prince or like or bill withers or i mean and, and i'm mentioning old people there's lots of great you know new writers that do it too uh you know or, or like you know, if you go back a little bit like to like like music soul child and anthony hamilton yeah. and like all of yeah. these people like they, they do that like it's tender right like they are being they're exposing themselves and being vulnerable right like and to me that really you like that's personally what i really connect with when i listen to music so like i i kind of sometimes i find the it a little bit sort of almost like a little bit if you're part the term a little bit chicken shit sometimes to sort of dance around telling a really honest grown emotion in your song uh just because you don't you know, kind of want to expose yourself, you know? So that's, that's maybe where that's coming from for me, you know? As Just curious, have you ever, have you ever cried while performing one of your songs or even shed a tear? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, one the song that I had in the TV show Nashville, um, can't remember never loving you. Uh, when I wrote that with Byron Hill, I mean, it was written based off something my son had said when he was, uh, like two, he actually said, uh, mommy, I can't remember when I started loving you to my wife. Right. And so like, that was pretty moving. And, and so we used that as an idea and, and built on it. But I remember even recording the work tape of it and feeling a little bit verklempt and, uh, and a little bit overcome. And, uh, to me, like, you know, that's always, I always say that to people, like when you're making a record or putting a set list together, you know, uh, the set, the, the slow song is going to make you cry and the mid tempo is going to make you want to drive your car. And the up tempos need to make you want to dance. And if they don't check those boxes, then you maybe need to go back to the drawing board, right? Absolutely agree with you. How did that song get to uh, get on the uh, get on Nashville? Um, well, like most things in our business, you know, and life in general, there's there's so many things lining up. But um, well, we wrote the song, and then uh, my co-writer Byron is a, an incredible writer and, and really had an amazing career in Nashville. Continues to so. Um, he and his publisher had been pitching it and myself and my, my co-publisher on it had been pitching it to, you know, people, we, all the people we knew, but uh, one of the real difference makers, um, on my side of the, of the, uh, full court press was, um, another Canadian, Colin Linden. Um, and so Colin, uh, was working on the show and playing with the cast on the road. And, um, so I met Colin through another Canadian legend, Eddie Schwartz, hit me with your best shot, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I was met, uh, I met a uh, Colin through Eddie, uh, Colin, I sent him some songs. He loved them. We met for coffee when I was in Nashville. And then he said, Hey, why don't you come by the Ryman? I'm playing with the cast at this benefit that Connie Britton is doing for, um, some charity that she works with. And um, so I did, and then I hooked up with Colin after the show, and he said, and he brought me backstage, and I hung out in the dressing room with Colin and Buddy Miller, who was the music supervisor for the show, and um, and met most of the cast and uh, hung out. And and Buddy had said, "Hey, you're that guy that sent us that song. I love it." And uh, I think Byron and his publisher had sent it as well. We're going to see if we can get it in the show and. It actually didn't happen while Buddy was still with the show. He left and another gentleman took over, but um, it eventually uh, made its way. And, you know, all this time, of course, um, my the co-writer and, and his publisher, uh, Dan Hodges, were also pitching it. And so we were coming at him from all sides. <laughs> hey, a great song is a great song. Doesn't matter what management does getting around. A great song is always going to resonate, and that one definitely did too. But look, man, we're talking about other great songs and great music. You kind of mentioned it earlier. I always like to make this part official. You, my friend, 
the album. What is this album called that we've been talking about? Episode and how is, <laughs> how is it representing you in this part of, in this point in your career? Well, um, yeah, episode five, because it's my fifth record. And um, I, I, I did a lot of video content and a bunch of different stuff for it. And I also sort of just, it was funny, the title kind of came to me because you know, we're in this golden age of television with all the streaming services and, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's hard to get your music heard. And so I was maybe being a bit cheeky, like, you know, people like uh, people will watch six episodes of a show a night, but if you ask them to listen to uh, six 40 minute episodes, but if you, um, you know what I mean? But if you ask them to listen to a 40 minute record, it's a little bit like a too, too much of a time commitment. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of like, you know, maybe I should call my record an episode and then somebody will check it out you know so i was being a bit cheeky there but um the record you know like it, it, interestingly it, it's it evolved i mean i had been writing um a lot like prior to the pandemic i had been going to nashville four or five times a year in la a couple times co-writing working on getting songs with other artists and and then you know often i would do demos like my previous record yes man um a lot of the songs on that were songs that I had written to pitch to people. And then I had done the demo and the demo came out really great and it wasn't, nobody had picked it up. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to put it up. So, but with this record, there was like, I really feel like, I mean, there are songs that certainly could be cut by other people, some of them, but like sort of from the beginning, not sort of from the beginning of the process of making the record, um, I was writing the songs for me and for my record and to express my own artistry so i really feel like like some of the more uh, slightly involved chord changes on some of the songs the horn soloists um some of the the synth layers and the vocal arrangements like I, I really feel like it it digs into you know what my really digs into my identity and like you said which i'm glad you noticed there is variety in that identity but there are some pillars being, you know, the singing, it's all centered around the voice and the soulfulness and, um, and, and really great musicianship. You know, I've, I'm lucky to know a lot of great musicians from all over North America that have contributed either, um, either uh, just by sending files or in person. We cut a bunch of the beds, the drum and bass tracks down in Austin with a player down there and another bass player from here. And uh, so, yeah, I just, it's a really like, I just feel like, when I, I really can put episode five in someone's hands and say, this is like, not to use my name in the third person, but this is what like Ian Jane's artistry is all about. You know, it's very, very representative of, of, of who I am uh, without any sort of, and not that I, I would ever, um, I'm not willing to play ball, but like, you know, sometimes you're like, well, I'm going to do something a little more this way. And then maybe it'll, I'll get on this radio station. Or I'm going to do something a little more like this, and then maybe I'll I can get on these kind of gigs. There was none of that, and you know, honestly, interestingly enough, I think a lot of that um, was it was that was my mo from the beginning of making the record. But then the pandemic came along, and like I'm not going anywhere. I'm home working on this, finishing this record alone. Like, what else am I going to do but kind of go inward on it, right? It works, man. It absolutely works. And it's well, something that's funny that you said that you didn't want to sort of, how do I put it again? Um, you know, worry about, okay, if this doesn't fit in this radio station, don't worry about it or whatever. Your music is universal. So in a lot of ways, it fits anywhere and everywhere without oh, intentionally you. doing it. So I, I love that. But um, when are we going to get you around and touring man like when are we going to get you on stage and are you even going to be hitting the lemon stage too as well absolutely that's definitely we've been i was going to do it in the summer and then some things changed i, I was up in the gta in, in the summer and, and did a, sh a set at the beaches jazz festival which was great oh cool um and uh but yeah i mean we're working on all that all the time hopefully next summer um well, we're, we're going to get some stuff going on. I've, 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 I know, like I said, I know lots of great musicians all over and I've been doing some, um, I just shot some videos and, and did some gigs with some players from Toronto that, that I, I know and have gotten to be real tight with, uh, you know, musically and as friends. So yeah, uh, um, man, I'm, I'm always down and, uh, I love, you know, either playing solo or, or putting a great band together is, man, it's, 
It's what I live for, as I've been doing my whole life. That's what I am, you know. <laughs> well, well, as we are slowly closing up this year, you know, we're coming up slowly to yeah, the end of 2022. Not, not so slowly. <laughs> it's coming. So I'm yeah. just curious, man. Any chance for any holiday songs from you as we're going into the holiday season? You know what? I, I don't have any. Um, I don't have any recorded that I'm going to officially release on DSPs now. Um, you know, posting one on my socials or something like that is definitely a possibility. It'll probably happen. But um, I actually just finished sort of, I was actually speaking to Jessica Lemon about it. And I, I, I had a, I wrote a really great one. I just, I finished it too late to really effectively release it. Because by the time you record it and mix it and do the artwork yeah. and get it, to, I mean, they want them, radio stations want them in like August and stuff, right? It's true. It's very you know? true. So uh, understandably, because there's a lot of legwork. So um, it's funny you bring that up because I was just speaking with a, uh, a mixer that I work with today about uh, about you know doing one because I had reached out when I wrote the other the, this song and then realized it was too late in the year to get started but definitely next at Christmas I've got a good one that I wrote so I got a year to get it together. <laughs> well, there we go. Year. Not a year, eight months maybe. Eight months, but you know what? We still have our Christmas gift, which is this great album. So I got to oh, say, my friend. You. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Congrats on the music. Looking forward to seeing you on stage. And like I said, man, cross fingers, we're going to actually see you too on the Lemon stage, which would be great to see Absolutely, you Absolutely, man. I can't wait. Thank you again for the interview, my friend. My pleasure, Rudy. Appreciate you doing it. Have a great week.